Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Control. Today, we're going to take our shot at Ashtray Maze, and we're going to get to talk about weird fiction, which aptly isn't a really straightforward subject to talk about at all. As a recognized genre, it's been around for over a hundred years, but it's still kind of hard to pin down via definition, and that's kind of by design, a little bit. It is weird fiction, after all. Impossibly changing labyrinth. Can never pass through. Dimensional research. Every measure of security. Like a lot of artistic movements, it was uh, reactive. It was formed as a reaction to something that came prior to it. Namely, How many dead ends can this place have? Uh, it was a reaction to the genres of horror popular at the time, like gothic horror. We see the maze is out of commission. Parts of it are functioning, shifting as they're supposed to. We just don't have a means to navigate it just yet. So we kind of came here on a red herring. For now, we will be back to Ashtray Maze. We have to go hunt down Ati so we can find the key to get through the maze. And in the meantime, oh yeah, by the way, note the radio and the music. Um, so I was talking about kind of the early genesis of this genre uh, and kind of how genres can be really restricting. Especially when you worry too much about where those hard, clear boundaries are. And things like, what boxes do I need to tick off to make sure that this counts as part of this genre? What tropes do I need to include so that this is considered a, a, a gothic horror or a romance novel? Stuff like that. Weird fiction, there's, there's something about it that is very grungy, very punk rock about it. The way it sort of eschews a lot of boundaries. Uh, it has leanings, but it tends to really test some limits of genre. Uh, and challenge many of the conventions from the genres it leans towards as well. Uh, and the result is often pretty strange. It's not always good, but it's always a little different. That's my estimation of it. And because it's this always shifting thing, it kind of morphed into this movement that many call the new weird. The weird fiction of contemporary authors, uh, as opposed to the classics. And you can even stratify things down into even smaller micro eras that have kind of come and gone over the past century or so. But the funny thing is, I said all that, and it still doesn't really help you understand what puts something in that box, that box labeled weird fiction. We don't know what's disqualifying, we don't know what makes it weird, we don't know what's qualifying. And that's an issue I ran into a lot trying to find a clear, concise definition. There's no Ati. Where is he? It's easy to do that thing that you do with most art and go, well, if I point at it and I, I observe it and I feel like it's art, then it's art. If it is, then it is. I do that with weird fiction a lot. Now this boy left, said the son of Anniki Tahti. My assistant will keep work in the club and the house standing. 
Lobby lumps, holiday humps. How can anyone even get out of here while the building's sealed? Let alone go on a holiday. Guess I'm about to find out. Oh, that look, the overlays here look really good. But that's the thing. That's how I identify with a lot of weird fiction. It's just, yeah, this feels about right. I wonder what else is like this. And you kind of just feel your way around the genre. It's kind of cool. But also a little bit frustrating. And again, by design. Because it's defiant. And in that defiance is something really interesting. And there are works within that little gap of defiance that are timeless and so, so good. Like what we're playing right now. Uh, so I mentioned the classics earlier that would include authors like uh, Kiernan, Algernon Blackwood, Lovecraft, of course. Even Edgar Allan Poe is often uh, uh, lumped into this genre. Poe does a lot of gothic horror and also a lot of weird fiction. Uh, and for many, all cosmic horror is weird fiction, but not all weird fiction is cosmic horror, I think. I think it, it tends to lean into uh, blends of sci-fi and fantasy and horror. But still, many, sh uh, many strange fiction, weird fiction, whatever you want to call them, works also incorporate elements of, like, comedies and romances and classical dramas, too. Uh, some are really meditative and just outright strange for strangeness sake, like, uh, Midnight Gospel on Netflix. I don't... That's the new Pendleton Ward cartoon, and it is... I do not want to call this good, because I don't know if it is, but it's kind of interesting sometimes but it's very odd it tries a bunch of shit and i don't know if it works all that often and then a common doorway into weird fiction is through of course cosmic horror and specifically the cosmic horror of hp lovecraft and that was certainly the case for me if you've been watching this channel for long enough you know that Lovecraftian fiction has always been something that I've, I've been very fond of. Which, mm, there are problems there. Uh, one, Lovecraft is not the end-all be-all of the genre, and so defining it solely with him at the center of that universe kind of does a disservice to how broad the genre actually is. Uh, if all weird fiction was Lovecraftian, it would just kind of stagnate. And the other is that even by the standards of his time, he was a huge bigot. He was anti-Semitic as hell, and he was racist and xenophobic as hell. Um, and that makes reconciling his legacy and his artistic output a little challenging doubly so because it's so hard to ignore in his work. Uh, real quick, before I finish that thought, I got something a little new. You can hear Ati's radio going, you can hear someone speaking in Finnish. Otherwise, this is these are familiar trappings. Not so much the clog that's just bursting out of room 222 like the Kool-Aid man. It's second room. A little better, though. And we're completing the recurring motif of the radios. Saw one right before we got in. Saw one uh, by the control point in Ashtray Maze. So here, it's not too complicated what we have to do. We just have to turn on all the radios in this room. Ring the doorbell to open the third. And turn the radios on there. Uh, so, let's talk about Lovecraft being a racist. <laughs> um... I was saying that it's not just, he, he didn't just have his private racist thoughts uh, divorced from his art with any problematic artist. 
their problems tend to fucking seep in to the work. Sometimes in really obvious ways, like the cat. You know which cat. Full well. <laughs> um, but also thematically. Like, tons of his stories are about fear of the other, or fear of being replaced by the other. Which is a super common thing, even today, with the alt-right and, and um, the white and genocide conspiracies. Or the Great Replacement. These are fil uh, these are still problems. <sighs> and not only were many of his his like eldritch alien creatures coded to represent the entire non-Anglo world, many of his works just kind of dump all over regular black and brown humans. Uh, one of his most famous works, The Shadow Over Innsmouth, is a straight-up allegory for the dangers of race mixing, for, uh, uh, miscagenation. Ooh, we're not gonna quite make that ledge from here. So you... Ah, oh, nice! One of the few times, uh, they don't dodge in midair, and I appreciate that. So yeah, there are some problems uh, with Lovecraft, with his work, and with defining so much of the genre by him, holding him up as the normative standard of the genre. I want to get one last look at this, because it's so pretty up here. Um, the style of, of his prose the elements of cosmicism and the fact that that's, that was my window into that cosmic horror, how cool the mythos still is, all of that is still important to me. I, I still value them as a window into this, sh into this subgenre. But it is, especially as time goes on, more and more uncomfortable to grapple with that legacy. And that's partially why post-Lovecraftian weird fiction emerged as a, a movement. Again, it was a response, a reaction. And it continues on that path of exploring these cool ideas while also challenging many of the toxic viewpoints that bled into H.P. Lovecraft's work. And related to post-Lovecraftian fiction is the new weird. Uh, with folks like Jeff and Ann Vandermeer and uh, China Mieville at its vanguard. There are, oh god, there are too many authors from too many eras that I'm not going to appropriately get to cite or, or shout out or credit, but... Mm. This is an introduction to the weird. As this whole LP has kind of been, which I'm pretty happy about. Uh, right now, we're just waiting on the cable car to make its way over to us. Wasn't sure if I was actually popping that one. Like, I'm reading uh, Perdido Street Station right now by China Mieville. One called, I forget the author's name of this, Shaman Space, which was sold to me in the following way. Uh, the protagonist of Shaman Space is on sentient drugs that are themselves on drugs. And that alone caught my eye, and the style of this uh, is challenging. It is written like a, uh, a poem out of nightmares. Out of a cyberpunk nightmare. And I mean heavy on the wispy dream logic and tone. It's a challenging read. <laughs> but it's pretty fun. And Perdido Street Station is fucking awesome. It's very uh, fantasy steampunk uh, with some drama and huge environmentalist bends to them. Annihilation, Authority, and Acceptance, the Southern Reach trilogy by Vandermeer. Especially Authority is a huge influence on this game, the middle book. Like, it's literally about a character whose nickname is Control. And it's got the same, like, corporate to weird eldritch horror juxtaposition going on as this one. 
God, it's so good. Uh, that's the Southern Reach trilogy, or Area X trilogy, by uh, Jeff Vandermeer. And we're heading to nowhere. Haven't been here since probably Silent Hill 1. You got me on a roll now, I can't stop. <laughs> oh, and I keep raving about the Magnus Archives, and I would 100% call that weird fiction. Uh, especially leaning towards the type of cosmic horror inspired by uh, the likes of Lovecraft and even Junji Ito of uh, Uzumaki fame and countless other incredible horror manga. Some of which are super weird. Everybody remembers Uzumaki. But they don't talk about the one where he wrote uh, a story about two ghost comedians who summon an army of spirits to tickle their audience until they laugh to death. Nobody talks about that John Gio short story or the one where the woman is like, ghosts are delicious. My mom was a ghost and I ate her. And now I can only gain sustenance by eating people's ghosts. <laughs> Oh, it's wild. Or the one where there's uh, the ghost of a flood. I just finished reading the hard, the, the, the hardcover collection of his short stories called uh, Smashed, and there's another I'm working through now called Shiver. Junji Ito, also very commonly Something considered to be a weird ahead. fiction author. Do you see it? Rewinding this down, but this is so damn cool. If you want to read more on the history of weird fiction, uh, Jeff and Ann Vandermeer edited a magazine together, and they did a pre pretty detailed blog post about it back in 2012, that link. God, these overlays blend really well in some spots. Now I think it's time to just drink this in for a minute. Hey, good. What a Holidays, holy. Arty? <laughs> Did you miss me? Did you have peace in your soul? Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Bart, don't make a wound. You did good. Take my cassette player. You can borrow it. The song is a present from my friends to you. It will get you through the maze so you can do your job. Did that really just happen? Of course it did. He gave me his cassette player. It'll get me through the maze, huh? The janitor always has the keys. Her delivery on that delights me. Ah, oh, what a game. So, good guy, Ati. So, unfortunately, I just barely don't have enough skill points to get the thing that I want right away. But pretty soon, if we scroll over, ground slam off of our levitate ability. Uh, shield also has a few things. Also, this map, I don't know if when the last time we actually opened the map up was, but I don't think I commented on it. Uh, the map has been drastically improved uh, as of a patch a couple of weeks ago. And it's the same patch that added in the uh, the Shield Rush ability on uh, the Shield Tree. And I think a few other minor improvements, like the map not disappearing when you open it up. Just becoming invisible. So, as we load into Ashtray Maze, which is something pretty special in and of itself, I'm going to go and give myself a cooldown. And I will see you all next time. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, sub on Patreon if you are able and want to. 
uh, or do the other things in the description too. That's great. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one. <laughs>